your Lord. Mighty and everlasting Father, we thank you, God, because the week was so difficult for us, but you've restored our lives this Sunday morning. Amen. Father, we thank you, great King, for whatsoever the devil has wanted to do with our lives during the week, God, you've restored us this morning Amen. to worship you and to praise you, to give thanks to your holy name, to bless you, holy God, because you deserve the glory, because you deserve the praises, fighting an everlasting king. At this very moment that the saints of the world are worshiping you, at this very moment that people who acknowledge the goodness of the Lord are worshiping you, we've come up to this mountain, O oh God, to worship, to join our lips, O oh Father, and worship you all together with the angels in heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. We then pray, O oh Father, that whatsoever people that are living on the surface of the world this morning will be standing, will be living, will be staying, O oh God, to listen to your words. May you open your hearts. May you open our hearts. May you heal us, O oh God. May you pour Your word should be a blessing in our lives again this morning. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Then we have said, um, this morning, Sister just said the week wasn't easy. Really, it wasn't easy. Uh, last week, I wasn't with you. Um, I seized uh, the opportunity that uh, sister gave me. I went to South London to visit uh, some of these other church that has been looking for me for quite a long time. And uh, we, we shared the word of God together. And uh, the word that we shared on that Sunday was the same one that we shared here last two Sundays ago. That is the, the, the future of the presence, the future of the past. And it was really amazing. It was really pleasant to people who really listened to that word. And uh, after I came back from South London on last Sunday, it wasn't really easy. I had cold on uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, I couldn't go out. I couldn't move out of my room. Thursday, I couldn't move out of my room. I called Sister Regina that I'm not really feeling fine. Um, and uh, she said, oh my God, may God give you her, may God come to her. And uh, Friday, I thought I would have been with you here for evening edification or evening meditation. It wasn't still easy, uh, but I thank God that today, this Sunday morning, we are together to share the word of God. Hallelujah. So God is good. God is really good. If maybe um, you asked my children now that uh, I, I can preach this morning, they will tell you now because for sometimes uh, it has not been easy during the week, but uh, the, our Lord is so great. Amen. He gives power to the weak bones. He gives more strength to the weak body. When your soul is weak, the Lord comes and strengthens you. What we're going to see this Sunday morning is the things on the part, and that is, are you busy to live or busy to die? I will move with this term slowly. I will move with this term slowly. Are you busy to live or busy to die? And we're going to read this word in the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. As I said, I will, go, I will move slowly in order that those who are listening, those who are getting this word this morning, should understand, should really understand what we want to say. You see, dear listeners, Dear brothers and sisters, 
In this our present life, as I said two weeks ago, there are three classes of people, or even more. You have a class of the rich, people very wealthy. You have the average class of the wealthy, and you have the poor, and you can even say those who are again below poverty. I would like Sister Bridget to come in with that child, if it's possible, she should come in with that child, come in with that child, <laughs> come in with that child, mama. Can we come? Yeah, come in with her. We're going to handle her. It's very important, so that you shouldn't miss this one. It's very important. We have classes of people in the world. Different classes of people in the world. Those who are very, very rich, sufficient rich, they think themselves that they, they, they don't think anything to anybody. They're sufficient. They live a very uh, luxurious life. They have all what they need. They live in big and huge palaces. They have servants. They have people working for them. Uh, I might even say they have people giving them bath. They don't need to take bath for themselves. They have servants who maybe have to give them bath. That is a class of people in the world. Another class, you have another people, another class of people who are not of that standard. People who are not of that standard. Maybe average. They live with what they have. They live with the with what they have. Yeah? People of that standard. Average standard of the rich people. And then you have another class. That we can talk of the poor. The poor is that one who has maybe just who lives per day? He waits from God. If the day comes by, he thinks of what he's going to eat, and he if he doesn't, and he if he doesn't have, okay, if he doesn't have something to eat, okay, he lives day after day. You have another class that doesn't even think of. These are classes of people living in the world. Now, the question we asked him this morning, are you busy to live or are you busy to die? If the way you live it makes you live a better life than you think, or the way you live it or the life that you spend in, the life that you live in, leads you to death. That is all what we're going to see. In the days of Jesus Christ in Jerusalem, the Pharisees were lovers of money. If you look at that, we had the Pharisees, the Pharisees who were really lovers of money in the book of Luke chapter 16 verse 14. And uh, the Pharisees also looked at the outside when someone is good, clothed like Pastor Gube. No, that is a good man. That is a man. That is, they, they, no, that's a good man. That was, that's a man. Pharisees were looking to the appearance. They were looking to they were looking to the appearance. As soon as you reach, you have money, you have luxurious car, you have a luxurious home, and then everything is okay. But sister just said here before we start. God doesn't look the appearance. God doesn't consider your word. Of God's purpose of Jesus was not. His purpose was not to look for. Your those who reach or the way they were living. He was looking into your heart. He was looking into people's heart. Jesus this morning want to look into your heart. Jesus this morning want to see who you are internally. It's not the flesh. 
Because the Bible tells us that. Sooner or later, the flesh disappears. The, this flesh will go back from where it came from. But the person living in you is the most important person. The person who is in you is the most important person. Is the person that you must consider. Is the person you must look after. People take more time caring about the flesh. People take more time caring about what is surrounding us. People take more time caring about what is going and passing away. But they forget about their souls. They forget about what makes a human being. As soon as your soul is taken away from the body, you are gone. There's nothing left again in you. So we want to invite each and everybody this morning who is going to listen to this word. Are you living? Are you abusing to live? Or you are abusing to die? Many people are abusing to die. Many people in this world are abusing to die. You're going to bear witness with me. That people are so much caring about what they live with their body. People are so much caring with this flesh. People are so much caring with the materials. People are so much caring with money. That was the same thing with the Pharisees in Jerusalem in the days of Jesus. And that is why Jesus had to vote. And that is why Jesus had to make some parables like this one that we're going to see this morning in the book of Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. The rich man and Lazarus. The life of the rich man on earth and the life of Lazarus on earth. And then later, the life of the rich man after life on earth. And the life of Lazarus after life on earth. Are you busy to live? Or are you busy to die? Mm. I am busy to live. Amen. And if I'm busy to live, I take care of my soul. If you are busy to live, take care of your soul. And what are the fruits? And what is, or what are the fruit? What is the fruit for your soul? The Holy Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fruit for your soul is the gospel. The fruit for your soul is the Bible. It's the word of God. Amen. That you listen every time. The fruit for your soul is the word of Jesus. Is the words of the Lord Jesus. That refreshes your soul. As sister just said. That heals you. That counsels you. words that comforts you. Secret can comfort you. Those who say when they have a problems, they move on. He's going to take about five sticks of cigarette at the same time. Thinking that the cigarette as soon as he's going to take about it, boom, he smokes mommy smokes and then he's thinking that he's going to the smoke coming into his heart is going to wipe away the sorrowfulness in his heart. No. After just a few seconds that the stick of cigarette has gone over, the heart tells you all the sorrowfulness in your heart comes back again and then, here I am, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm still there. You were thinking that to just me away in a few minutes. No, you can't just me away in a few minutes. I'm still there. You think people, when they live in this place in sorrowfulness or in joy or in, in a, in a, in, in, in a death life, they, they put themselves alcoholic. They look for wish, they look for strong, strong alcohol to drink in order to calm down their 
mistress in order to put down, to go down their minds. No, I want to tell you this morning, come to Jesus Christ. I want to tell you this morning, Jesus is the solution of the distress in your, of your heart. I want to tell you this morning, Jesus is the solution for what you are looking for. It's not drinking one, two, three, four, five bottles of beer. No. After just few minutes, that is going to go away. It's going to go away. And the same sorrows will come back. The same sorrows will start disturbing you. So are you going to and that is why you see many people have become a comic. Many people. Because since one bottle of beer can't chase that away, it takes two. Two bottles can't put that away, it takes three. Three bottles can't do that, it takes four. Can't do that. Come to Jesus. Jesus can do that. Amen. Jesus will refresh your soul. Amen. Jesus will pour, will pour water in your heart. Amen. Be busy to live. Don't be busy to die. The alcohol that you think that you're drinking that is to call your mind. You busy, you busy, you taking yourself busy to die. It leads you to death. True. That is why I said, are you busy to die? Or are you busy to live? Mm -hmm. If you want to be busy to live, live with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. Live with Jesus Christ. Someone should be ready to read. Live with Jesus Jesus condemned them. Not that Jesus did not love people with money, no. Not that Jesus did not love rich people. But it is the way Jesus condemned the wrongful love of money in the Pharisees. He was condemning the wrongful love of money because they thought, rich people thought that riches were synonymous to righteousness. As soon as you reach, okay, then I'm right. Mm -hmm. And that is what many people today, many people, no, they don't bother about when they're living, they don't bother about Jesus Christ at all. They don't bother about the word of God at all. Because they have money. They have already prepared their burial. They have already prepared the funerals. They have already planned everything. Everything has been planned with his money. When I will die, this is where I'm going to be buried. This is the cup of people going to buy. It costs about three or five thousand pounds. <laughs> Some other people have already bought that and put elsewhere or kept this elsewhere. Mm. They have already prepared for everything. Yeah. He's thinking that he's rich. He's been rich. It's synonymous to righteousness that he's going to buy heaven with that. No. It's a mistake. A great mistake. And that is why you see many people as soon as this rich people, some people say rich as soon as he's gone. Okay. They're going to call Sister Richie. They're going to call uh, another great bishop from in this England. They're going to call um, the new or many big bishops from this England and they will come there and say, God, this man was a very good man. This man was a very good man. This man has done this, has done that. This man who was who had never ever listened to the word of God. He's never been in the church for his life. Now we say, this man was a very good man. This man, he donated, uh, he built uh, the, the cathedral, the, the, the same cathedral of, um, of uh, London Central. He's the one who built that. He contributed the greatest part of the money. Oh God, I take him in heaven now. Take him in your heaven now. He's 
been rich and his riches is synonymous to the righteousness. So God, we are the new to take him in hand. No. That was what the Pharisees were thinking. But you could hear what Jesus told them. They were thinking that riches were synonymous with righteousness. They thought wealth was a sign of spirituality and they thought wealth was a sign of spirituality. That is what the, the, the Pharisees were thinking in those days. Being a wealthy person is a sign of spirituality and blessings from God. So I need no more to listen to the word of God. What is that Jesus saying? What are those people doing? That is what people think of in those days. And the same thing people think of today. Being rich and spiritual. Don't you need, don't need to tell him anything. He's already prepared his way. They were sure that poor people were not going to go to heaven. As soon as you were poor, that is synonymous to hellfire. But God's attitude towards the Pharisees who were devoted to money and took great pride to this worldly things was not the same. Can we read? Yes, the story of the rich man. The story of the rich man and brother Lazarus. Yes. Chapter 16 verse 19 reads the story of the rich man and brother Lazarus on earth yes and after life yes sister I read this in the name of Jesus Amen <laughs> there was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen who, who feasted simultaneously every day <laughs> That was a rich man, listed very well, the rich man, yeah? And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus. So this rich man was inside. What I want you to understand here is that this rich man was inside. This rich man was living in a palace to a boss. The rich man, again, is there anybody who has a gate? No, uh, Pastor Kume, my house in, in Haru is not with a gate. My house in Haru is not in a gate. Uh, I'm not living in a gate. This rich man was living in a gate. Who is living in a gate here in London? <laughs> can you imagine, can you tell me where someone lives here, the great man lives here? The queen's, the queen's gates. When you go, where do you go that? How do you call that area? How many miles do you cross around the Babylon Palace? How many miles do you cross around that gate? How many entrances are you having to have? That's where this man was living on earth. Yes, and there was. Yeah. Lay the poor man named Lazarus covered with sores. Oh. There was a poor man. This poor man. There was a man, a head, somebody who is going to hell. Living there. By the side of the gate. Because I told you in the Pharisees, uh, being poor was synonymous to hellfire. Was synonymous to a curse. Being poor. So any poor person is a curse from God. But you hear the cultural yeah. Who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Yeah. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. Yeah. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. Life on earth of the two people here. How can we describe the rich man's life on earth? Jude? How can we describe the rich man's life on earth? Yeah. Who can answer the, How can we describe the rich man's life on earth? His 
disciples could, comma, weren't they, comma, that he was considered prosperous. Prosperous? The life was prosperous. Prosperous, comma, happy. Happy, happy. I am happy. I am happy. No, it wasn't I am happy that Jesus is my Savior. Somebody else will sing. Will, no, it's another person that will sing that. His life was happy. Um, how can you describe that man's, the rich man's life? Every morning when he wakes up. Bless. Every morning, bless. Bless. Love. He will wait. Love him. Because surely he might have had a lot of women, you know, many wives. He wake up in the morning and then he stroll in his garden. Stroll in his garden. Uh, try to look at his flocks or sheep or workers. And then, and how can we describe Lazarus' life on earth? Describe Lazarus' life on earth. Yes. Sad! Lazarus' life was sad! Worthless. No, 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 description. Adjective to describe this man's life. Painful. Painful. Because he had sores that the dogs were coming to lick. Isolation. Isolation. Rejection. Rejection. Torment. Oh. 
now with eternal life. Because that life has no irreversible. But the one of F is reversible. Yeah. The rich man also died and was buried. Life after death. Life now after death. We have described life on earth before death of the two men. One was living dressed nicely, well dressed, luxurious food on the table, with all the dishes, with all kinds of meals, with all kinds of food.
But they said, an upper setting, maybe it doesn't reach the poor. Maybe it doesn't reach the poor, the destination of the poor. Okay. No, there's a poor person beside you. Everyone, you come across a poor person every day. You come across somebody who needs your help. What are you doing? You come across somebody who is asking for your help. You come across somebody who needs you. You will say, I don't have money. But you have the word of God. You have the word of comfort. Amen. You have the word of comfort. You come across somebody who is not living at all, who is not sleeping at all, who is living with stress every day because of the difficulties that he's going through. He's not asking you money. You have the word of comfort. Amen. What do you do with the word of comfort? You keep them for yourself. Mm -hmm. You keep them for your mom or for your family. No. No. Now the rich man is asking for mercy. There will be no mercy. And Jesus will say, life here is irreversible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he called out, Father Abraham, have yeah. mercy on me, and yeah. send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Yeah. For I am in anguish in this flame. He was living a better life. He was living life that he needs. No, but he, would, he did not need somebody to come and to put down in the water and then cool his tongue. No, he did not. He could cool his tongue by himself every time and with any type of expensive drinks in the world. Mm -hmm. But now he's just asking for a finger, eh? a drop of finger in the water. Is that what you want? Is that what you busy living for die? Living to die? Or you busy living to live? Yes. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you are in your lifetime received your good things and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. Lazarus was living poor. Lazarus was living painful life. Mm. Lazarus was living all the adjectives we have given to him on earth. Mm. But he had Jesus. Hallelujah. Lazarus had Jesus. Lazarus had the word of God in him. Amen. Lazarus was living with the word of God. Amen. No matter my painful life, may God remain into my soul. Yes. Lazarus was living to live eternal life. Amen. Lazarus was living without no sin. Living for live. Beauty to live is living without no sin. Is going out of sin. You are living to live a better life. That was Lazarus. Now, you lived your life on earth, which was beauty to die, and you are meriting what you lived on earth, which means no repentance after death. Hallelujah. No repentance after death. Amen. Nobody will preach you this gospel. It's true. After you die. Some people say, some people talk of Paul Gretchen. No. That if you die, there's elsewhere that you're going to live. And someone is come to someone will come to bail you. Mm. Huh? Someone will come and bail your bail. <laughs> Then from that point where you go to heaven. Mm -hmm. No? Here? Yes? Sister? Read it again. Read that. Continue. Okay. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed in order that you, that those who would pass from here to you may not do so, and none may cross from there to us. 
And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to. A great chasm has been put here, be it. A great chasm has been put here between you and I, you and Lazarus. There's no way. There's no way Lazarus can come to you, and there's no way you can come to Lazarus. Mm. There's no way. It is irreversible. Mm. There's no way. No repentance after death. There's no repentance after death. As soon as you die, all what you've done on earth move together with you. Your life move with you until, until you enter eternal life. If you were good, if you remain to the will of God, yes. the angels will receive you in heaven as they receive Lazarus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you good, the angels will receive you. Yes. Amen. And if you bad, the angels will reject you. And the hellfire will receive you. <laughs> there are no, or no any other alternative. The two lives. There's no way. There's a chance in between you and Lazarus. You can't more meet. Two of you can't more meet. There was a chance. God gave you to meet Lazarus by the side of your grave. Mm -hmm. And you didn't meet him. You had all the time to move by the side of your grave. Open your gate. Oh, Lazarus, stand up. Talk to your servants. Come and take this man and cleanse him. You had that privilege, but you didn't do it. Mm. Now it's too late. Christians want to be want that it should be too late into their lives, but that is not our preaching this morning. As far as you hear this preaching this morning, change your life. Amen. The music to live and not to die. Amen. Because there's no second chance. There will be no second chance for you. There will not be any second chance for the rich man. There will not be any second chance for Lazarus. It was once, and each and every one of them had what? He or she, he merited after life. Yes, sister. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now he wants Father Abraham to send somebody on earth that there is somebody should be resurrected, a dead person should be resurrected. So that people should believe that oh, the heaven that I'm preaching, I've gone there, I've seen everything with my eyes. So believe, it's true, it's true. They will not still believe. They will not still believe. Even if someone who died yesterday, he was buried and comes back tomorrow and say, hey, I went there, I saw it. London people believe. London people change your life. London They will not. Abraham said they will not. They have people who still preach the gospel. Even if somebody wakes from death and preach them, if they don't want to believe, they will not believe. They have the prophets. They have the apostles. They have pastors. They have servants of God. They have Sister Virginia. They have Brother Samuel. They have Sister Sarah. They have Sister Kara talking to them. If they want to believe, they believe. It's true. It's true. Dear brothers and sisters, dear listeners, it is time for us not to joke with what we have received. 
If you have received the word of God in your heart, if you know that you've received Jesus with you, live with Jesus. Live with Him eternally. If you know you've received the word of life, don't neglect. If you know you've received what you understand or what you have burned witness or what you've testified in your life, don't give up. Don't give up. It's about eternal life and this is true. This is fact. What happened to the rich man will happen to you. Yeah. Will happen to me. Although it has come across or it has come past hundred years ago, mm. it is the same thing today. It is the same thing. That is why people preach the word of God. There's no way that you reach into this world and you hear people not talking about Jesus or not talking about God. Why are they talking about God? They're talking about God because there is life after this present life. And that is the life that we've seen this morning among the two people. The rich man and brother Lazarus. We've described Lazarus' life on earth. We've described Lazarus' life after life on earth. We have described the rich man's life on earth. And we have described the rich man's life after life on earth. Make a choice. And stop complaining. Stop accusing poverty in your life. Stop Stop accusing whatsoever in your life. Put yourself in front of this world. If you haven't changed, change this morning. If you haven't heard about it, if it is your first time hearing about this, write us. River Resource Center here in London. Our website is open. We're ready to help you. We're ready to help you change your Christian life. We're ready to help you move forward to enter in eternal life, to enter into the life that will save you. We're ready to help you to not to be busy to die. Write us in our website. Dear listeners and dear brothers, may the glory of the Lord shine to this world and make it abide in our hearts in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.